promised. Sachin Menon of KPMG and Pratik Jain of PwC India join us now to discuss what India Inc's wish list is. What are the key changes that they want the government to make before the passage of the GST bill in Parliament? Uh, we are now moving closer. Remember, we understand that the cabinet is likely to take up the matter next week, and the parliamentary minister, affairs minister, has confirmed that the bill will be taken up for discussion and passage next week itself. Uh, gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here uh, on CNBC TV 18. Sachin, let me start by asking you to list out for us the number one change that you would like the government to make before this bill goes through in Parliament. Well, I guess uh, the, the draft uh, GST law is concerned. Perhaps that will, that will have much more time to, to uh, iterate. Uh, as far as the, the Constitutional Amendment Bill is concerned, I'm sure I would like to see that this 1% additional tax is dropped. And also that uh, a dispute resolution mechanism, that is a credible uh, demand from the, the Congress party. And that would definitely bring up the confidence of the people that they have a credible mechanism to resolve the disputes. Uh, these are the two things which I would expect uh, in the Constitutional Amendment Bill. So okay, uh, so I'll come back to you for more in just a second, Sachin. So of those two items that you've talked about, and these are two of the Congress's demands as well, we are given to understand that the government is going to drop that 1% interstate tax, and they are also going to give in to the Congress's demands, which is a legitimate one, as yourself have pointed out, as far as the dispute resolution mechanism is concerned. Pratik, you can't talk about those two. Uh, what are the other significant changes that you would like the government to make before we actually see the passage in Parliament? So uh, just one point on, uh, on the dispute resolution mechanism. In the earlier draft, you had this mechanism and the states then resisted and it was dropped. I'm not sure whether government has time to really get around and get a consensus amongst all the states to bring that provision back. So I'm not sure whether that will happen. Uh, but a uh, couple of other things which I'm expecting and should happen is that uh, all the stresses and surcharges, uh, the understanding of the industry was that it will go. But if you look at the Constitution today, Article 270 and 271, the central government has powers to impose stresses over and above the central taxes, which uh, some of them apply today as well uh, by way of such bharat stress, etc. Uh, so uh, I'm expecting that there would be a provision for amendment under the GST ambit and just sticking with the list of exclusions Sachin uh, one of the other key demands has also been to try and bring alcohol under the GST ambit in fact the Niti Aayog CEO Amitabh Khan said that this is something that the government is considering a quick word on the key exclusions uh, uh, and, and what you would like uh, included now uh, of course uh, Pratik has already talked about uh, on, uh, natural gas and ATF what about alcohol Ideally, all the items uh, which is excluded today uh, should have been covered under GST so that um, we will have a perfect GST with less uh, avenues for generating black money. Now, if you look at the, the current uh, system of taxing uh, the alcohol, it is on a physical removal system. So it has always been physically sealed by the excise officer at the, at the factory before it is moved. And this is one of the main avenue where the black money is generated. So therefore, right. I see no reason why it should be outside the GST ambit. And uh, of course, the petroleum sector also is, uh, is one of the area where we should have brought it under, under GST plus. Most importantly, the real estate stamp duty also should have come into GST. That's because, right. Uh, That's right. Uh, that is uh, the next, the other big avenue for generating black money is the Indian economy.
Well, let's see if any of these items are actually brought into the ambit of the GST. It looks unlikely at this point in time. But Sachin, uh, I also want to ask you about the clarity that's required as far as providing input credit is concerned on input definition. Uh, can you take us to the finer print on what you would like to see the government clarify on some of these key issues? Very, very unfortunate that the model GST law is uh, end up uh, to be a summation of the old provisions of the service tax law, the excise law, and VAT law. And I think uh, the people who have drafted this uh, model GST law seems to have forgotten that uh, there is a uh, entire change in the in the way we are thinking about uh, the indirect taxation in India. And GST is supposed to create a common global market uh, in national market in India. And perhaps that. Uh, that uh, feeling is not uh, is reflected in this in this uh, draft model GST law. For example, now the old dispute about whether the input is used for providing output service or manufacturing goods is copied as it is, and this is one of the area where the maximum dispute dispute happened in the in the current current regime. Right. So maybe it is a good idea that you have a uh, a seamless input credit provision where the input credits mm -hmm. are available to, uh, uh, is allowed on, on all business expenses uh, which is debited to the PNL account because the law doesn't even give uh, any leeway in terms of any exception on the sales price which include even free supplies right. or even uh, the, the post sale discount is disallowed if that's the case it should be that much benevolent in terms of giving the credit okay so it all actually right. undermined the credibility of the draft Okay, so uh, hopefully more clarifications. Uh, uh, if the finance minister is listening, uh, this is what India Inc. is hoping for. Uh, Pratik, let me end by asking you now, as far as the GST tax rate itself is concerned, we've seen what the Arvind Subramaniam Committee has recommended, but uh, you believe, uh, and the government has very clearly said, that the cap will not be uh, part of the constitutional bill. Perhaps uh, some sort of rate will be part of the, the regulation or the rules itself. Uh, deviation of 2 to 3 uh, percent, what is the, the view as far as the rate is concerned? So two points here. One is uh, that I don't think that the rate of GST would eventually turn out to be more than 18 percent as uh, so, uh, Urban Sovereign Committee report uh, has recommended. Uh, I think politically it will not be accepted at this point in time and Congress is also insisting that 18 percent should be, should be the upper cap. Uh, although, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense, uh, as the government is saying, to include that uh, rate in the Constitution because you have seen how difficult it is to amend the Constitution. Uh, so it will most probably either come in rules, as you said, or, uh, or in the Act, which, of course, will happen at a later point in time. Uh, the point on, on, the, on the band was that if you look at the Constitutional Amendment Bill, there is a proposal that GST Council can decide the band of rate within which the states can... of 10 percent and others said it could be let's say 20 percent I mean that will be a disaster and and therefore a I mean to start with there should not be any ban but if, I think it's a it's a more of a state's uh, demand even if there is a ban that should not vary beyond a two or three percent point all right uh, Pratik and Sachin appreciate you joining us here this is our uh, message to the finance minister, Mr. Arun Jaitley, hashtag Dear FM. All of you can send in your suggestions and clarifications here to CNBC TV 18. Remember, you've got just a few days because we understand that the bill is going to be taken up for discussion and passage next week. So if you've got